Hi, hi guys. Um, hi Harshita, thank you for being here. Um, we are here to again continue with our series on uh, menstruation and nutrition with Geeta Ghaliawar who is a, a certified, IOC certified uh, nutritionist. And she's helping us understand what is the connection between food and menstruation, especially when it comes to athletes. So we're just going to wait for her to join and we will start off with our discussion with her. Please give us a few minutes. Hi Geeta. <clears throat> I have just sent you an invite. Uh, maybe you could use that to join us on the live. Hi Vishu, hi. Hi Kamal. Yes, and you're here. <laughs> hi Aditi, good evening. Hi, and, hi Gita. And a, a warm welcome to everybody who's signed in. We very few. Uh, Live audience, but yes, nonetheless, I think we're good to start. Yes, we are. We are. And we always have audiences joining us later on. So, so anyway, I mean, we are here and we are going to talk. So, um, so Geeta, how have you been? We missed the last <laughs> week uh, session because of a technical problem. But how have you been? Yes, all good. Thank you. And I hope all's well with you and... Uh, our audience who signed in today. Yes, I hope we have uh, some fantastic questions coming our way. Uh, I'm waving to everybody who's joining. So please be around. Um, so let's just start with our, uh, our discussion today, uh, Geeta. So we are here to uh, discuss, um, you know, how can maybe an athlete um, look at uh, having a regular menstrual cycle? And also, how can we uh, relieve some of the gastrointestinal distress that we could experience as athletes, especially because we have a lot of travel on hand. There is a lot of, uh, you know, uh, time management that we need to do. There are different time zones that we are working in, playing in. A uh, lot of different kinds of foods that we have to adjust to as we travel around the world and all of that. And that can cause, especially with menstruation, uh, some real issues in terms of loose stools or things like that. So uh, before we go to GI, um, could we just um, get your opinion on uh, how is food connected or what, how is food, uh, what's the food's relationship with uh, having a um, regular menstrual cycle? I mean, what is the connection there? Totally. I think uh, um, menstruation is so, I think, um, overlooked the importance uh, in a female and for that matter as an athlete. The menstruation itself is the, responsible for the hormone uh, you know, cycle and estrogen has very important functions. It's not just uh, the male sexual hormone, testosterone is um, uh, also anabolic and that's why men, I think, also have higher uh, muscle mass. Whereas females have both the physiological requirement and uh, with the biological uh, requirement have a slightly more adipose tissue or fat. So, but having said that, uh, the estrogen is what is heart protective. Uh, and that is the reason you will see lower incidences of heart disease in the menstruating lady. Mm. 
and apart that we already know that the estrogen itself is so important for bone mineral density so it has a direct impact on uh, the bone health and if you are an athlete who does not take care to ensure that your menses are ongoing then that can be a very um, detrimental factor because it can increase your risk of bone fractures and that is not what an athlete wants and so, apart that your dyslipidemia meaning that if at all you are missing your menstrual cycle you know uh, typically what we call as amenorrhea if you do not get your cycle you know at least for two to three times and that's a red flag which means that you really have to intervene medically and nutritionally to see what is going on because that is not desirable at all so estrogen has very important functions in the body and you ought to menstruate on a monthly basis and it can vary anywhere between whatever 25 to 28 days cycle now the mistakes that probably athletes do is you know based on the kind of sport you play and uh, the weight that you need to maintain for a certain uh, sport particularly if you're into aesthetic sport or a weight category uh, sport combat sports you have to kind of have a, there is a lot of pressure for you to maintain that you know the range or sure. for you to be within that Uh, weight, particularly if you're in the pre-competition cycle. So what athletes do is don't plan their, you know, uh, requirement through the um, entire macro cycle. So it's kind of very um, incorrect practice to approach it at the nick of the minute, you know. So right. that is not a good idea. So uh, there is a minimum need. I mean, what we say in our uh, scientific calculation, we say minimum thirty calories. Now thirty mm. calories equal to eating less than half a fruit. I mean, just to quantify. Okay. Sure. So, to ensure that there is a good, adequate intake of your calorie itself. So that requires a bit of handholding and you know the guidance from a you know sports dietitian, where you are able to plan your calorie intake and what we call as energy availability. You need to be eating enough because if you are constantly going to be obsessed about eating less or cutting weight, you know weight cycling has to be very scientific protocol again. Yeah. Yeah. You know there are days where you have higher demand as per your training cycle. You need to definitely consume. more quantity of calorie or you know more quantity of food or calorie similarly if you are looking at you know taper training or if you're off season then you need to have a certain different calculation towards how you are able to look at your macronutrients be it protein or be it your carbohydrate intake the type and the quality of these intake itself so i think that mm. is extremely important and i think as an athlete uh, you know aditi i'm sure you will um, second what i am suggesting about the training uh periodization today it is extremely um you know uh, athletes are aware everybody is talking about you know training periodization but how was it in your times of when you were you know when you used to play how how did you manage your load yeah so uh, so quite uh, honestly and uh, um, geeta like when when i used to play uh, my load was really uh, not connected at all with the way i was menstruating or my cycle and i think that was a big problem and 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 because you know uh, and we were i mean it started from the fact that we couldn't even tell our coaches or athlete or our support staff very openly about we having our periods or you know stuff like that i mean that discussion just never happened uh, but of course overall uh, if you keep the menstruation part aside of course there were you know there were uh, we would we would try to peak at the right time that mean uh, that meant we had to kind of train at the right amount the right things for example uh, when we used to approach our um, um, tournaments we would cut down on how heavy uh, weights we were lifting or we would cut down on a lot of strength work and focus more on speed and explosive workouts uh so of course there were th- those kind of um um things that we had in mind but we never really connected the dots with menstruation and i think uh, the the fact that you talk about estrogen and how how it's imp- it's, it impacts the bone uh, density and all of that we were never aware of it and we were never told about it as much and i feel like uh, i was a very uh, injury prone athlete i had a lot of injuries as i as i played um and i had a lot of issues with my knees as well like i had two operations on my knees and today when i look back i feel like there was there could have been a a a, a connection between you know how i was planning my um, how the load especially uh, you know in terms of uh, when i was menstruating or you know the food that i was eating i think uh, at that time the the awareness at least from my end on nutrition wasn't as good uh, because i just felt that you know i was 
eating enough i was eating all right no junk um, but i was never very sure about my proportions you know ki how much vitamins how many minerals um, again you know in terms of my menstruation should i kind of think about what i'm eating and all of those things so that awareness i think is much more of course in today's athletes but i still feel like uh, if you talk about them with how is it how do you connect my, uh, you know your training load your nutrition and your um, and your menstruation cycles the answer still majority is kind of we don't know about the menstrual cycle we kind of, of course, i mean that that connection has still not been made as much um so yeah so during my time uh, as i said it was of course we kind of did our um, uh, you know our training plans according to our tournaments more so and less so with our menstrual cycle so so yeah so that was i right. think a mistake somewhere to gradually periodization also i think uh, has to be very scientific and there yes. has to be adequate you know uh, understanding of what what do you do with your on court training to a sports specialist versus your strength training or your fitness yeah. conditioning versus the cardio and definitely the days where you have lighter load of flexibility yoga yeah. or you yeah. and it has to be crucial also to ensure regular menstruation because uh, the training load is definitely related to a uh, regular menstrual cycle because so, you need to have rest and recovery which is i think personally now that i work with predominantly athletes i notice that that can be a big challenge yeah. uh, young adolescent athletes are not even getting 6 hours of sleep and oh, the regular sleep is 8 and a half hours or more yeah. there is yeah. sleep deficit so you need to and make up you ought to make up for the sleep because sleep again is related like i talked of the hormones you yeah. know with the stress hormone cortisol you know when you're training for 3 4 hours there is going to be long term stress hormone called the cortisol it's not just epinephrine so you know you at these hormone sometimes even excessive or intense training load can impact your estrogen and lower the estrogen and that's not desirable again so you mm. need to because there is such a fine ball of homeostasis or hormone balance so i think that's very crucial so training load is definitely very important enough planning your rest and recovery days i think mm. it's um, like i highlighted i think these are very crucial Uh, adequate food intake, and sometimes if you are really looking at weight making, uh, weight cutting, ensure that you kind of plan your you know carb cycling in a way that there is a kind of you know um, uh, high intake on training days versus you know how you are able to lower your food intake. It could be as simple as you know eating two chapatis less, two to three hundred mm. calories. Mm. But there are many mm. people who do that. You could just you know reduce one portion of your uh, rice roti in all three meals. And that itself can be three hundred calories less. Or similarly, you could increase the calorie intake from your training load, and that that itself yeah. can ensure your you know mix and match uh, suitable to your training load. So yeah. rest and recovery is important because I think that uh, uh, like we said, if it's PCOS or you have any hormonal imbalance, you have thyroid issues. I, I mean, I think these hormones are all inter interrelated. So mm. I think you care particularly if you're looking at our weight target. plan to keep about 2 to 3% of your uh, you know um, body weight for example if you're 50 kg you want to target about you know um, 1 kg weight loss over you know over a month you're not looking at that drastic you know 24 hours to uh, or one or two days just before your main event where you are yeah. looking at dehydrating techniques or some undesirable unfavorable methods to look at weight loss starving you know dieting and uh, sweating to you know uh, dehydration which typically is seen in some of the uh, sports which is not scientific and not safe at all so i think when to go backward planning to say that okay this is my target uh, like you said also about um, you know athletes who are in the international circuit and who do have a lot of travel so yeah. that also has to a lot of stress particularly if you are also in, you know um, traveling across time zones yeah yeah i'm happy to say either my very rarely do you hear sometimes that oh my god my you know cycle is delayed or sometimes if this was stressed it can happen vice versa too they can have their menstrual cycle arriving about 5 days early yeah. and you know things go for uh, things go for a hot spot and you know um, so i think yeah overall you need to look at some of these parameters if if you are looking at ensuring particularly if it's a red flag that you have already had history of you know amenorrhea or missing mm -hmm. menstrual cycle then you really have to take care that's a red flag like you actually said that really i think the support staff the dietitian the yep. you know the um, uh, the sports medicine guy or to everybody we are a team and we definitely need to look into this yeah 
Oh, great. So, I mean, just connecting this to like, you know, like you said that we need to be very sure of what we are eating and, you know, uh, so that, I mean, uh, uh, sudden loss of weight or sudden even, is it also an issue when you gain a lot of weight? Can that also cause um, uh, a miss in menstrual cycles or is it just about losing weight? So, uh, right. So uh, the the science and the um, uh, the guidelines are that you ought to maintain a certain uh, you know um, range of your ideal weight because uh, there is a minimum requirement. It was interesting for me also to uh, when I was researching and I was going to be on this live today. Um, you know, a female athlete can have about about eighteen to twenty eight percent of body fat. So there is a certain requirement of your body fat itself for you to ensure because you know. Uh, Females have a different, um, you know, the physiological function yeah. of childbearing. And yeah. that's the reason I think nature has made us have more adipose tissue. <laughs> but if you're over, you're going to be, you know, uh, having eating disorders or you mm. have, of course, you need to be sensitive about the way we handle this. But if you are into a sport, particularly, there is a need for you to be looking at a certain weight uh, range. Then all the more reason that we need to educate them that focus, because... When like the way we guide athletes, you cannot be building a uh, muscle and losing fat at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you're losing muscle mass, you are also going to be looking at increase not just your protein as a macronutrient, but you're also going to be looking at your calorie intake because muscle building itself, the anabolism or muscle making takes extra calorie. So you are going to be on a slightly larger calorie budget than usual. Whereas yeah. weight loss, or your what you call as a you know a, a phase where you want to lose fat because again if you're in the pre-competition cycle or competition yeah. cycle you cannot be looking at weight cutting yeah. because that is that is not the recommended time for that yeah. you know and that's that's what you need to be um, targeting when you are in your off season that's sure. why you have like you are an athlete and you know that you can do because you do one or two days of you know um, intense workout or strength training you have severe dogs. Yeah, you know, and that yeah. kind of body soreness, or you have such severe pain. If you don't take the right recovery foods, you know, have the right protocol of or the supplementation, you can be so sore you will not be able to move one or two days. Yeah, and for an athlete, it's an ongoing cycle. It's not just yes. about you know day to day, right? In a day, so, there are two three sessions. Yeah. So I think that's very very crucial that you kind of have to um, um, look look at this very scientifically, not just in terms of the training load itself. But yes, to have a certain fat percentage too, uh, within the range, you know, right, the, though right. 18 to 28 is a broad range, but we're talking of a percent. And that varies right. again in terms of the kg, right? I mean, with yeah. the reference, you know, reference body weight that we can go by on an average. Right. So, uh, so in terms of like, would you suggest having, uh, uh, you know, a test on the fat content, like you said, like, you know, should we be as athletes, should we be more uh, ready to kind of get these tests done periodically to just make sure that we are on the, especially for sports who are looking at kind of, you know, coming at the right body weight and losing weight and gaining weight. I mean, it's like a cycle for a lot of sports, like for badminton, it wasn't the case, right? I mean, I mean, we had to, of course, be on the leaner side and the fitter side and all of that. But the weight was not a criteria for us but maybe for games like swimming or boxing you know where weight plays a role uh, would you True. suggest having this periodic checks on your fat content of the body would, would that make any sense absolutely uh, but again here uh, the thumb rule is body composition transformations are very gradual they take a lot of time um, also it depends on the budget uh, yeah. or the organization that you are with do you have a sponsor uh, mm. Because there are uh, bio, you know, simple techniques as bioelectric impedance, which can give you ballpark point of what is your fat percentage and a muscle mass. But okay. that is again, you know, just just um, um, you know, uh, somewhere close to what you could be. Because again, mm. based on water, what time of the day, uh, yeah. for that matter somebody like you and me who just consumes food through the day we can increase by about half kg or more mm -hmm. so again there are certain deviations and 10 to 20 percent is uh is expected okay. and normal mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you can't really uh, it's not foolproof but um however uh, if if you are looking at bioelectrical impedance as a method of body composition analysis it's a good idea to track it at least month on month or more frequently mm -hmm. uh, practically uh, same time uh, on the same machine. So that right. way you have some kind of a yardstick or some progress mm. to 
Sure. Unless and until you have uh, the DEXA availability, which is dual X-ray energy absorptometry or BOT pod, but these are typically available because of they are not just expensive; they're also massive. Like BOT pod, mm. of course, is a small machine. So there are sure. one or two comparison uh, things than the cost involved. So mm. they are expensive, mm. based, and um, also the discomfort because in the BOT pod you have to hold your breath and stay sure. put. It's tight. It's like a capsule, and sure. you've got to be encapsulated in it for a you know minute or two. So right. these are again very costly. So okay. whereas okay. you know uh, the bioelectrical impedance machine is quite portable, so it's easy to kind of you know move it around and kind of you know easy to track. So that's right. one thing. Also, there is again um, the um, kinetopometrists who uh, use skin folds. You you uh, pinch your skin. And you are going to have um, you know different sites in the body where you are going to you know look at calculation uh, sure. through skin fold tests, and that's called the skin fold caliper. But again, you need to be um, educated or qualified, and definitely so, to read that. Yeah. <laughs> and then there are manual errors too. Yeah. So sure. you know it's preferable that you have a trained individual do it. Again, you know typically. Preferably, you know, by the same, uh, you know, kinetopometrist or the uh, individual who will track that on a routine basis. So again, there are calculations involved. So you know, I think what is also important is, like I tell every athlete, if you, in the pandemic there has not been a, many opportunities for them to kind of, you know, hop around. Like right? yeah. things have been locked down. So like the like I always tell them, it's I understand that these gadgets help us to track, but at the same time. as simple as how you feel how toned you feel mm, uh, mm. also the way your clothes fit you many times yeah. as simple as taking a measuring tape and you know getting your your body measurements itself can be quite simple uh, sure. we also uh, manage sure. your own parameters so yeah. i think that that's again um, you know uh, very practical and doable by the athlete themselves but sure. overall after as long as we are looking at uh, as i was guiding you uh, the objective or the goals of every athlete is varied and different and I, you are able to if you are able to discuss and track those goals and you know have a target and keep very realistic doable simple um, you know have a simple approach i think that's that's really important yeah great uh, so let's just jump on to the gi distress part of this discussion so um as an athlete a lot of times um, i mean there's i don't i have i would always wonder is it because of the just the match pressure or is it something uh, that is related to my cycle or is it just biology or i would always give it to stress because we were never used to discussing menstruation in a scientific way uh but but i would have this problem of loose stools right uh, especially when i would be traveling or you know uh, especially when i was on my period days um, so how could somebody uh, avoid that i mean is there any way we could avoid the loose stool problem especially when it comes to um, uh, we we are traveling or you know we are playing our tournaments uh, because that can be some it can be kind of something like a uh distraction I right from all yeah <laughs> unusual yeah just you're not comfortable right uh, and that can again affect the way you prepare for a match or whatever um so could you just help us uh, you know give us some guidance on that you know how could you manage that totally because uh, it's not just bloating water retention and other discomforts of abdominal cramps right uh, the hormones of uh, the uh, menstruation because as you are arriving close to your menstrual cycle there's a Uh, dip in your estrogen and progesterone goes up and similarly the prostaglandins which kind of are the ones that lead to pain and inflammation and certain foods like we were discussing in the past trans fats the highly baked goods the deep fried yeah. you know chaat to all your pav vada pav and all these colloquial the the <laughs> fast food things can increase and even red meat for that matter sure. uh, can be some um, you know hormone like substances like these prostaglandins and that is what can lead to uh, you know diarrhea or, or loose stool and that, that yeah. again very and different people respond differently but yes the loose stool can have a psychological impact particularly if you're an athlete or you are in a competition cycle or are traveling and for that matter even for any normal individual to have a tummy upset can be quite annoying <laughs> yeah so sure you see a uh, toilet repeatedly it can yeah. kind of psychologically be a bit you know disturbing so yeah. there are there are ways we could tackle this so what the, the i think my suggestion here will be that you need to look at certain foods which can give you soluble fiber now soluble fiber like say for example pectin pectin is found in apples pears figs avocados now these fibers when 
and also not to forget simple things as drinking water when you're already kind of feeling bloated and queasy the least thing in your last or the last thing in your mind would be that hey look i think i need to grab some water i mean that really <laughs> like you particularly if it's winter now it's been yeah. quite nippy and cold so um these um fibers when you consume them with adequate water they form a gel you know and they bind the stool mm. as in using a mask it is nothing mm. but it's a petal a uh, flower so these things have soluble fiber and they bind and in the past also i've talked of how you know from bananas to oats uh, flax seed all of these have soluble fiber fruits like i already mentioned oranges so the soluble fiber is a good addition particularly if you are having loose stool now tried and tested method like i mentioned in the um, in the term we call it as the brat diet now the brat diet stands for banana rice um a is for apple and t for toast so mm-hmm. when am i somebody is having a gi distress meaning that they have a loose stool or diarrhea the first thing that we uh, mention is hey go with you know foods that are tried and tested don't overdo like you know i mentioned i remember you mentioned that when you thought you were in your you know periods and you would eat a salad now yeah. already when you have bloating and other discomfort now high fiber for example yeah. if you are taking brown rice whole grains pulses with skin they all have lot of indigestible fiber or they are very high in fiber generally they are very good for you yeah. but you need to kind of personalize this to see how you are responding to it so if you are eating a lot of fiber rich foods like dark green leafy vegetables or you know the whole grains or pulses these can again aggravate your loose stool because then they increase your food movement through the gastrointestinal tract right so if you are doing high fiber that is again counterproductive so it is better to go with moderation you know and simple things as even white rice in fact now we know that there is the arsenic content in the water now we also know that even organic brown rice is holding on to this arsenic because of the water logging of the paddy so right. white rice is good <laughs> so a lot of actually guys think white rice basmati yeah. rice is just bad and they plagiarize that and say oh god you know this is very unhealthy so everything in moderation is absolutely fine so i think these are the days where you want to really enjoy that pasta or white bread or white rice because it's very easy on the stomach light to digest okay so uh, similar to toast again um because you know uh, anyway the even the whole grain toast or- requesting the audience ah yeah. you go back yeah i thought it was you and anyway so yeah you continue please <laughs> okay so uh, so look at look at soluble fiber definitely adequate hydration the brat diet like i explained to you even if apple if the pectin or the skin irritates you you can stew the apple or just give it a one pressure cook or just just boil it similar with figs again figs mm. pear apple you just you can stew them Uh, just give it a slight little boy you know and yeah. uh, that can kind of be very helpful so as i mentioned white rice oats these are good good options so look at look at soluble fiber go moderate with the salad and you know yeah. in fact quite simply even beans uh, like the pulses itself have soluble fiber but then they mm. also have the skin is indigestible meaning it can lead so, to again further yeah. gas and so right. another tip here is see how it suits you you can look at canned option or you change the water when you soak these pulses you change the water repeatedly two three times and discard mm-hmm. or throw away that water and cook it thoroughly you know mm-hmm. cook it uh, cook it for a long duration so that you know the fibers soften similar right. with your thing so uh, carrots again are very good in soluble fiber so you know cooking them softens the fiber and right. and not to you know uh, the adequate intake of water now certain foods again can make your Do uh, make your diet or lose to worse, and that is caffeine because mm. caffeine very important for athletes is the ergogenic. I know yeah. a lot of athletes take coffee shots or you know consume black coffee prior to their workout. The coffee is a stimulant and has a laxative effect, meaning that that can make your uh, diet or worse. Mm. So mm. Foods, even pulses, pulses, right. beans, coffee, alcohol, spicy food, uh, cruciferous vegetables. 
because again it can lead to a lot of bloating like you know sure. uh, your bloating or sudden pain again if you have you know a sensitive tummy or irritable bowel syndrome uh, that can also um make your you know tummy extra sensitive so go with tried and tested things sometimes it's good to just keep a journal or a mm-hmm. log importantly certain supplements because mm. athletes have a requirement um of supplementation based on your need so if you particularly looking at magnesium don't overdo more than 400 or 500 mg magnesium again has a laxative effect there are different mm-hmm. types of supplements again so some you know uh, from uh, magnesium to oxide so when you overdo it the magnesium is a muscle relaxant too so that can aggravate your loose stool or the area but sure. interestingly the calcium supplement and the iron supplement leads to constipation mm. so mm. it depends on uh, you know every athlete's needs sometimes these hormones are funny uh, even post, uh, progesterone itself can make um, an athlete constipated yeah so if you are already uh, prone to constipation then you may want to look you know uh, at your uh, iron or your calcium supplement because then you want to kind of periodize it and kind of plan your days when you want to take that because that can again aggravate constipation yeah okay awesome so i think um, we've covered a lot of things here which are very very helpful and doable again i mean i didn't know about you know brat being a nice terminology as well <laughs> when it comes to uh, period diet i think it comes it happens to be a good terminology to be used uh, so so i think um, from my end i am done with all the questions that i had for you and i've got a lot of clarity on everything that you said um if in the audience we have anybody with any questions on uh, irregular uh, menstruation or any kind of gi distress or even anything else related to menstruation and sport and nutrition um you could please uh, put these questions here uh, this is the time to ask us those questions of course if you don't have them right away send us uh, these questions through a message you can dm geeta or dm simply sport uh, and once you dm us we will make sure we answer those questions for you um uh, Geeta, is there anything else you want to add, or something that we might have missed? Uh, yeah, often I think I, I try, I try and you know convey as much as I can. Uh, and I say we are not, of course, computers and robots. So yeah. I think with the ability that what you what you can, of course, like uh, the audience is most welcome to uh, reach out us to any of us at any given time. Um, yeah. As a closing remark, I will say. uh don't be a overthinker don't fret too much uh it's a passing phase i think mind over matter because if you're going to be stressed out too that is going to aggravate these symptoms so yep. uh just take it easy and don't worry about what another athlete is doing which typically is all yeah like, and yeah, i that's I, a separate that. discussion <laughs> uh so so i know that uh, i have the uh, athletic community sometimes uh this one athlete so always keep this of what the other athlete is consuming <laughs> uh so sure. i think don't don't to be um you know um very curious or inquisitive of what's going on there i think what's important is you try and uh you know make it work for you uh for your yeah. you know yeah. don't look, um you know comparison kills the joy out of this whole thing <laughs> and i think that's what uh, my um um my future mantra that i really want to um, kind of make peace with so many things so i think uh, i'd like to pass on that that notion to even our uh, audience to say that yeah just just be happy where you are and what you're doing and do what gives you you that comfort yeah yeah and no and i think about- and i think i think this is very important to kind of i mean as a passing note i mean i like to say this that as at least we t- tend to compare a lot right i mean we always comparing how much the other person is training how much the other person is meditating also sometimes it's about sleep i mean there are constant comparisons on different things but i i, I feel like especially for women also i mean i am tr- i'm sure for men as well but for women with our menstruation being a very important part of our lives um, our bodies are very different i mean everything is so different from each other so i think understanding that and being um, uh, you know aware and kind of um, respective you know uh, respective of this thing that you know we have we are individuals not just in the mind but also in our bodies and we are different from each other and we should take care of what of ourselves 
rather than you know thinking about what others are doing so so it is not very easy easily come it doesn't come easily for an athlete but i think it's very important to do so uh, so thank you so much geeta i think um, great stuff here and i'm sure you know i mean this will kind of test uh, you know test the time as we go ahead people are going to come back and listen to this because uh, this is very very valuable um so thank you and we will meet you again uh, next week um and it's going to be a super super interesting discussion because it's kind of an overall topic it's not just nutrition but just i think an overall topic so i'm very very excited about that uh so so yeah so see you next week i hope you have a good week till then yeah great aditi thanks a lot thanks for everybody who joined us today and i yes uh, thank, thank you, you guys yeah we need to share the knowledge and i hope it will benefit even a bunch of people who can get yeah. um you know help from this uh, then this these uh, these knowledge sharing uh, sessions are definitely worth it yes completely i mean i am i am that one anyway for you geeta mm-hmm. I mean, if you just want that one i am learning so much so uh, so i am sure mm-hmm. that people are going to come back to this so so thank you so much uh, geeta and i'll see you next week great aditi thanks a lot see you guys see you next week. bye see you guys thank you for joining mm-hmm.